What's going on everybody? This is Tony from Strictly Better MTG. I'm coming to you tonight with a deck tech request from one of our fans. It's going to be Budget Blue Black Flyers, which is also going to double up as Blue Black Control under a budget. So let's dive right into this. We've got two copies of Prognostic Sphinx, four copies of Icefall Regent, and two copies of Slumgar Drifting Death. After that, we've got our spell list coming in at 27 spells. We're going to have three copies of Duress, one copy of Despise, three copies of Anticipate, four copies of Slumgar Scorn, a silver bullet copy of Nullify, just the one, four copies of Dissolve, three copies of Foul Tongue Invocation, two copies of Drown in Sorrow, Three copies of Murderous Cut. Should be able to get that delve down to three mana realistically without too much of a problem. After that, we've got a Silver Bullet copy of Dragon Lord's Prerogative. I actually thought about running two of these since we don't have all that much card draw or card advantage in this, but we do have our Prognostic Sphinx letting us scry three, and we also have that Anticipate to help us dig, so we cut it back to the one. After that, we've got two copies of Extinguish All Hope. We went with this over Crux of Fate because it's just monetarily cheaper. It's one mana more, but it doesn't have the choice of dragons or non-dragons. Instead, it's all non-enchantment creatures. So the only thing you really have to worry about after this is Corsair of Crufix. You can usually deal with that. So let's move on to the sideboard and talk about some of the other things that are going to help us deal with our Game 2 matchups. Game 2 and 3 matchup. <clears throat> We've got two copies of In Case and Ice. We all know why that's there. Don't have to say too much about it. Two copies of Ultimate Price. Again, don't have to say that much. A third copy of Drown in Sorrow, because against aggro and token deck builds, we want to be able to see that more consistently and sort of keep them on the defense with it. After that we've got two copies of Bio Blight. Again that helps with those aggro matchups, being able to wipe out tokens and Goblin Rabble Masters and Monastery Mentors and Secret of the Ways and all that other good jazz. After that we've got two additional copies of Despise. This is for mid-range matchups, being able to take out those Siege Rhinos and Elspeth and so being able to take out creatures and planeswalkers from turn one, even in the la on, is really nice. It's really helpful, especially when you're on a budget. After that, we've got two copies of Palace Siege. This is for the uh, two life drain effect that it's got. It's mostly against the control matchup. It just helps put pressure on them. And most of our control matchups are probably higher dollar, maybe, or maybe they're just running more fetch lands or pain lands, either way, or mana confluence for that matter. So it really helps us swing the tide more favorably for us. Especially since those are going to be longer, grindier games and whatnot. And then along with that, we've got two copies of Indulgent Tormentor. It's a nice body, he flies, so he keeps with our flying theme for our creatures. And he's got a nice little icing on the cake there with us being able to draw a card, or, well, um, draw a card unless our opponent sacrifices a creature or pays three life. They're usually always willing to pay that three life, but if you com combine that with the edict, with the edict, with the palace siege effect, that ends up being five damage each of your turns. That's really helpful. They can really pressure a control player because they don't want you to have that card advantage, but they usually can't pay the sacrifice a creature part of it, so they'll have to pay three life or just let you have cards. After that, we've got a second copy of Nullify for aggro and mid range matchups. Just a little bit of extra creature protection when we don't want them to have that Siege Rhino enter the battlefield and drain three or their wingmate rock, or any of the other things with awesome Enter the Battlefield effects. 
On top of that, we've got a fourth copy of Foul Tongue Invocation. Mostly against aggro, still against mid range as well. It's nice to have that sacrifice effect to hit those hexproof guys or those indestructible guys, police main lion, other Salongar drifting deaths, maybe even Ojutai. And the four life gain that we're usually always going to have since we run six dragons is really nice. It's invaluable. So let's throw those ratings up there and give a quick run through of those. We've got a high power rating at 7, a really low speed rating at 2, on par for us as a control deck. After that we've got a synergy rating at 5. The deck is fairly synergistic. A lot of the cards in here end up working well together and just complementing one another whether they seem like it or not. After that we've got a really high resilience factor at 8. We've got four sweeper effects main board. Our versatility is going to be an eight. The deck is fairly versatile. It's usually set up to deal with just about anything you come across. That being said, we do have a fairly low offense rating at four. We don't get offensive until the late game, and even when we do, it's usually one creature at a time. Uh, what's next? We've got a defense rating of 8. Fairly common to see a high defense rating again. We're a control deck. Everything we do is mostly defensive. So let's talk about the game 1. We've got a 7. Pretty decent game 1 there. We can usually do fairly well against most of our matchups. Aggro, like with any other control build, is usually our biggest problem. Though we do have those two Drowning Sorrows, which which helps us out with the aggro matchup. As long as we see them, that can prove pretty invaluable. Along with that, we've run plenty of counter spells to counteract their burn spells that they're going to try and sling at our face. Stoke the flames. <laughs> uh, Foul Tongue Invocation with its 4 life gain also helps negate that 4 damage from Stoke the Flames. So there's a fair amount of play there. In boarding, we go to an 8. We're so much better after board because we can get rid of any of the dead cards that we may have had and trade them out for more useful options. Against aggro, we might cut back on some of those counters, some of those dissolve counter spells and put in more removal that is still cheaply cost, like the Encase and Ice or the Ultimate Price, the Vile Blights, <clears throat> and the third copy of Drown and Sorrow. Yeah, and then the deck is also always consistent with an 8. It is always doing exactly what you want. doesn't always give you exactly what you need for the situation, but it will always get you through the situation. At least it has for us here in testing. So, on that note, we're going to wrap this up and get back to testing some other stuff because I've got an Infect deck, which is going to be casual slash modern. I'm making sure it's modern legal won't be something that'll stand up to tier 1 and 2 modern decks. It probably won't. It's not that it's not fast enough or not good enough, but it's not quite good enough. Um, I'd like it to be, but it's, it doesn't seem that way. I'll We'll get there. I think that's it. Um, I've also got a uh, Soulfire Grandmaster deck that I'm working on. Hmm, yeah. It's basically red, white, burn, but it's focused mainly on Soulfire Grandmaster. Not going to be the most budgeted thing, but a lot of fun to play with. A lot of fun. So, look forward to those. And in the meantime, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe down below and all that jazz. If you like this and want to share it around and help our channel grow, we enjoy it, we help it. <laughs> We appreciate it and look forward to doing more of this stuff. We've got Magic Origins coming up, so look forward to that. And this is Tony, signing off from Strictly Better MTG. I'll catch y'all next time.